Hey guys, today I am on East 3rd Street and we're going to cover one of my New York stories live if I can manage it. So there's quite a lot to see and I'm going to have to double back on the road a couple of times. Especially as there's a work crew right where I want to stand. Okay, now I'm not going to lie, I do have a phone open because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. And the first place we're going to start off with is this area here that used to be an empty lot. They've got a restaurant here now. And this empty lot, uh, it was in the early 70s, I, I think about 1972. There was a fireworks display going on right in the lot here. And the Hells Angels filled um, a trash can with explode. Well, I say explosives with uh, firecrackers and fireworks. And then they threw, uh, threw a match in there. And unfortunately, a 14 year old boy got hit with shrapnel from the trash can and he died right there. Now why were the Hells Angels here? Well, I can explain that to you uh, quite simply because we're coming up on that spot right now. Now first of all, the, uh, the owner of the uh, famous New York club, CBGB's, the owner, Hilly Crystal, used to live in this building right here. And just a few doors down, I'm not sure if there's any remnants of it. But from 1969 until 2019, this place here used to be the Hells Angels Clubhouse. It was here for 50 years. Now I'm going to slot a couple of pictures in there because obviously uh, it's no longer the Hells Angels Clubhouse. But they used to have a big sign right there. Uh, you know in their uh, clubhouse it's like a big placard and all along here is where they used to park their motorcycles and it was quite funny because they used to have uh, cones out and the police w wouldn't really touch them but also I'm not sure which side it is it's got to be this side they put a bench right here and they actually had a chain right across the uh, length of the bench and it said property of the Hells Angels and that was basically to stop the people in this apartment building coming down and sitting on it now like I said it was only 2019 that the uh, Hells Angels leave here I'm actually looking to see if there's any marks left. I mean, it looks like they've taken everything. Uh, perhaps the only thing is the two sevens on the door. Maybe they were custom made by the Hells Angels. Anyway. For 50 years, the Hells Angels uh, had that place. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my glasses on. So I have to cross right across the street. And I can't see the, uh, the house numbers, but it's got to be down a couple more from where we are. Okay, this building here, number 72, this is where uh, Harry Connick Jr. used to live. 
when he first came to New York. And I can't see the numbers on the door, unfortunately. Number 60, that's exactly what I want. But I'm not sure, I think it was this one here, the cleaners. This used to be a, a reggae music shop called Jimmy Land. And what was unique about this place, at the back of the store, you could climb a ladder, yeah, literally a ladder into a hidden room. And that's where they uh, used to sell underground death metal. Now I actually thought Jimmy Land was still here, but I guess it's been gone for a while. Ah, there's the address, look at that, 60. Ah, I keep pressing the wrong button. Now the next one I'm looking for is number 46. But I wasn't able to find it on Google Maps, so I'm not sure exactly which one it is. He said, as they land right upon it. Now my notes aren't very clear uh, on my phone. I should have paid a little extra attention last night. But from what memory serves me, Quinton Crisp, the naked civil servant, the uh, British eccentric, uh, I guess playwright, author, he was played by John Hurt in the movie The Naked Civil Servant. When he came to New York, he lived in this building, I think it was for the last 21 years of his life, and I'm not sure, I think he actually died in this... Uh, apartment right here. Now if you've not seen The Naked Civil Servant, I'd highly recommend that film. I remember watching that with my family back in England, way back in the 1970s. So I can't remember the name of this house. Uh, it used to have a name. Someone famous used to live here. But I didn't write it down. So I'll have to slot it in. But either way, whenever the Grateful Dead would play in New York, apparently this is the house where they stayed whenever they were in New York. Oh, it's got the name there, but I don't have my glasses on. Windthorn Marble House. I had to squint really bad for that one. And this house here, 
It used to be called Kite House. It's got the Show Me State House. Uh, I keep pressing the wrong button. We just step into the road. So the Kite House used to be the home of William Abner Eddy. And he was a reporter and a kite enthusiast. And he was the guy who invented the diamond-shaped kite. The one that's more famous uh, around the world now. Okay. So that was just a brief history tour of Third Street. And there is one other thing that I noticed online that I want to capture before I turn the camera off. As I've mentioned in many previous videos, I love finding old faded ads. I don't want to miss it, but on this building here, there's an old faded ad somewhere. That looks pretty good up there. Look at that. Isn't that a wonderful looking house? Okay, there's the faded ad there. So this is one of these ads that's been there for like a hundred years. Let me see if I can put my glasses on. So Browery Branch, menswear. It's very hard to see uh, all of it. Let me see if there's one on the other side as well. Because this building's been here for, uh, for a long time. Okay, that's going to wrap us up, guys. I might need to change my battery soon. Because I've got another couple of videos coming.